Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Thank you for joining. Today they have released the patch notes for the PTS for title update 10 and they've made some really interesting changes to status effects, skills and all. There is a lot to read here, but I would say the most important aspect of this is actually reading uh, these uh, is it four or five paragraphs that the developers have put in as a note here in order to address this. Now, I will say some things here I agree with and some things I don't agree with because if you guys remember when I made I made a video a long time ago, I think these guys may be snooping around our, our channels and reading what you guys are saying. And that video I said one of the best ways to beat legendary missions is you need to take a tank. Almost 80% of those comments said you don't need a tank. What you need is one CC and three DPS. Well, I think the developers have caught on to this, and I think this is what they're basing a lot of their changes to crowd control on. Now, they do give, in my opinion, an explanation. I don't know if that explanation is going to be sufficient for you or if it's going to be sufficient for everybody because I play both. I play status effect, burn, bleed on the DPS side, and I also play tank. Basically, I play a lot of tank more than anything else, and it seemed like truly... Tanks became almost redundant for teams who wanted to run legendary missions, you know, from from a more coordinated perspective. And so I think they're basing a lot of their, you know, this and this is why I say I don't agree with a lot of things. I think they're basing that on teams that are able to knock out this kind of content very fast versus, say, a randomly match made team. Now, yes, over time, I can see how one CC and three DPS will become, you know, what everybody leans into. So that's what they're saying that they want to make the change for to make healers and tanks a lot more essential. This is what they said. They said there is no need. They wrote this. They said, why consider bringing along a tank or healer when your crowd controller essentially does the job of both? There is no need for a healer if the group never takes damage and no need for a tank if the NPCs are always incapacitated or rooted in place. Now, incapacitated and rooted should clue you into the two that they change. They basically change the shock trap. Uh, shock trap base duration is reduced from five seconds to three seconds, even, it, even though they increase the radius. And then they also change the chem launcher riot foam, which is uh, it's uh, ensnared duration per skill tier bonus is, in, is reduced from 20% to 10%. Firefly, the blinder, uh, you know, was also reduced from 20% to 10%, and the blinder firefly base damage, uh, base blind duration reduced from six, uh, six seconds to five seconds. Now, <laughs> this is where I think I have a problem, and I will tell you why. This is based on player time and a lack of more intense testing on their part. And I've told you guys before, I like Massive, but I would call it out the way I see it. Some of you, some people say some really weird stuff. Being polite doesn't mean you're stupid. So let me give my own critique. And in the nicest possible way, even though behind the scenes, I may have some more scathing ways. I think they constantly do this because they're not testing their game more intensely. And the effect is it's wasting player time. Now, 10% doesn't seem like a lot. But it's see, if, if you look at what it takes to get your 10%, it's a matter of time investment. It's not a matter of just a 10% nerf or a 10% buff. It's a matter of time investment. I've said this in many, many videos. You spend time trying to get gear in patches that the loot was trash. Okay? Not just say the new loot generosity. Oh, we're going to give you better gear down the road. No, no, no. You got a lot of your gear when Warlords of New York came out and the loot drops were horrendous. That's when you actually min-max your gear. You didn't min-max your gear in an environment where a bunch of, you know, gear was just falling down from the sky and everything was min-maxed. And this is where the problem is. Even though they're going to give loot generosity down the road, it doesn't really make any sense. And I can give, in my opinion, some reasoning on how they can work around having to nerf stuff all the time this may be much more development time this may be much more you know bug inducing and they have to do more testing but at least it will still make them it will still make sense of what they're having to do so 
they've talked about a lot of this stuff here, and I'll encourage for you guys to read it because if I start reading it, it might bore you guys. But let's do let me do my best. I said one of the core objectives for the design team when working on Warlords of New York was to make the end game challenge challenging again. That's fine. They also said enemy NPCs were, you know, basically four to five times more powerful in the prior content. It kind of felt off when they brought more difficulty. They also said they noticed that, you know, NPCs were too powerful and crowd control skills were scaling too high. This is a miss on their part. They did not test their crowd control. They didn't test their shock traps intensely. They didn't test the blind. They didn't test the, you know, the enemy, uh, what term I call it, the cement riot foam thing. One became a necessary evil to combat the other, and so, and so we were reluctant to change CC because of this. Now, they've also said they've done a generous amount of buffs to weapon damage and gear coming into TU-10, and this will further tip the scales in the player's favor. I get it, but what about the skill players that have been basically abused in the past few nerfs? You had the send off the rooted talent taken away, even though they said we didn't want any holster talent. That's why we took that away. But there wasn't any replacement or anything. You had the motherly gloves that had 10% of his damage nerfed. What did you guys do about that? You're going to go bring a new gear set called Foundry Bulwark that they've also kind of tweaked and nerfed in a sense, even though they say, oh, we want the Foundry Bulwark to be the premier gear set choice for tanks. Well, Many of us spend time farming the tardigrade armor and all that stuff. And sure, I can understand you want the, the, the Founder Bulwark to be, you know, the premier gear set. But guess what this might do? You're probably trying to create a meta for what tanks should all be running. Massive, what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Don't do that. You have to find a way. It's your job. I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you how to do it to make player diversity much more. This game is getting more and more convoluted with each patch. This is where we're going to have a problem. They might need to push this stupid TU-10 down the road until they can get a lot of this stuff right. I don't care if the content is not if the content's going to be delayed because if they botch this, they have sold off their player base to any game that is out there. In fact, they're already doing so. You are increasing pre-order numbers for every single game that's coming out. And I like this game too much to see you guys fail. And don't be fooled. We like this game, but you cannot continue to treat your players like this because of your intentions and because of your lack of intense testing y'all have got to take some time and work through all of this tweaking numbers just tweaking for the sake of i mean really you got to tweak all these numbers in the space of two weeks three weeks and we're going to be playing whatever you dish out for three months there needs to be a lot more a lot more testing and a lot more uh, you know, stuff being done right now, because trust me, the amount of content creators that we have and the amount of the community that we have even testing this stuff, you probably need to join some some personal discord servers where people are doing intense testing. The Division 2 discord, I'm sorry, it's a good place for LFG, but that's not where the conversations happen. There are some discord servers where the real testing is going on. There are guys that are dedicatedly sitting there grinding out these outcomes and trust me, it seems like we are on two different playing fields. I appreciate the buff to weapons. It is a shooter. But do not be shy to make the game an RPG looter shooter that it is. You even said it here in your developer notes. Where did they say it? They said, they, they said this return, retuning of the RPG mechanics has forced us to audit the economics, the economics of our NPC encounters in more ways than one in order to address unfair, overly punishing, or generally overtuned NPC archetypes. We consider all of this a good thing because it keeps us honest as developers and the game as fair as possible without compromising what makes difficult content fun and rewarding in the first place, the challenge. I know you guys want to make the game challenging, but you cannot be tunnel visioned. The game is still an RPG game. Even you, you know, we know. I know some others don't know. They're all here saying, oh, you should use your weapon. That is Call of Duty. That is Call of Duty. That's Apex Legends. That's not the division. Sure, use your weapon. They're getting buffs. They're giving us buffs. But at the same time, 
even though as a tank, and I'm saying this from a perspective where, yeah, if I'm going to be useful in a legendary mission, I'll be happy to slap that build on. I have like three of them on each of my accounts. But I'm saying this because they need to reconsider this much more carefully. I don't know how this is going to bode well with a lot of the player base. I think the solution is MPC behavior. I think this is where the solution is. Tweaking all the numbers all the time doesn't, in my opinion, solve the problem. You have to be able to trust your community to be able to enjoy the content and feel powerful. At the end of the day, if the community says we're too powerful, then at that point, I think you've done your job. Honestly, you just need to focus on bringing out more content down the road. Trust me. I think we're I think you know we we are misconstrued as to what endgame difficulty should look like. Endgame difficulty should look like you as the player haven't done the work before you got to endgame or while you were getting to the end of endgame. That's where your difficulty spike should have been. It should be a curve, should not be a progressing climb that you can never achieve a peak towards. The peak is where you finally get to the point where you're slapping any enemy NPC left and right. And if you guys want to continue to, you know, maybe maybe make that, you know, peak steeper over time. So the enemy, you know, so we keep climbing. You need to continue to tweak your enemy NPC behavior. Trust me, all these nerfs and buffs, they're not going to suffice. The hard work is in doing enemy NPC behavior. And you can do that in the context of new content. You can bring out a, whatever the skyscraper or whatever. You can say, hey, ladies and gentlemen, as you're going into the skyscraper, you're on your own. At that point, then people have to go back to the drawing board and say, what are we missing? We've had all the power to deal with all the enemy NPC archetypes in the game. But in this new content, we seem to not be able to do anything. Where are we going wrong? That is how you make your players ask questions and go back to the drawing board and tap into the resources that they may never have tapped into in the game. And perhaps even shift the entire gameplay where if you're walking into this new content piece, everybody has to change their play style, change their gameplay in order to go in there. These buffs and these nerfs and these changes may be good, but to be very honest, I think we're going to see another round of them because we're going to go ahead and discover what is strong and what is it, what's effective. That's just the way we play the game. So I don't know, man. Ah, Maybe I seem like I'm just not... I'm, it's hard to satisfy you know, a lot of the community, but I've been reading and I'm seeing the frustrations of the community and I don't want this I don't want you guys to make the same mistakes. I really want the division to still succeed. Take this thing and go back into the drawing board and if you have to delay the content, it's worth delaying. Cyberpunk 2077 is going to eat your lunch because it was worth delaying the release of that game. Okay? Please, please, let's not do this. Let's Oh my gosh, I got to get off this video cuz <sighs> 